think everybody stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. Every time. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Um, roll call of officers, no introduction of committee members. Oh, I missed the roll call. I'm backing up again. Roll call um, of officers. I am Barb Feldy, chair of the License License Hearing and Public Safety Committee, and I am here. And Leslie Laster here. Betty Ackley, who is the assistant chair or vice chair. I'm here. Mm -hmm. And Dean Decker here. Um, I'm looking for um, introduction, and I guess we went down all of that, into the audience. Um, we're going to start with you, Chuck. Chuck Adams, City Attorney. Thank you. Um, um, we're going to go to the back row. Todd Hill. Mike Lennon. Eric Lennon. Thank you. Way in the back. That would oh, seem to be it. it. That would be it for Miss Grazia. Oh. Oh, sorry, Grazia. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I need approval of minutes from the July 14th, 2021 meeting. I'll make a motion to approve. Second. Um, is there any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed nay. Chair votes aye. Motion carried. Um, resolu oh, I'm, I would like to move um, the... Resolution Ordinance Number 47-21-22-7-1921, communication from Roger Miller. Um, he's submitting a communication regarding an alleged nuisance bar located at 1133 Michigan Avenue. Mr. Miller, you could step up to either one, whichever one you, you pick. Uh, thank you to, for allowing us to come and speak before you. Um, I have a, several people from the neighborhood. Uh, I live in the Gateway community, which is a, this city has been working to revitalize. Um, we have an issue, however, of disruption in this neighborhood that we've been trying to solve for months. Um, it is... It, uh, It is the overly loud music from Sol and Nova that they continue to produce. Um, I've had discussions with our alder person and her prior predecessor. Um, I pointed out noise ordinance 66-71 states any unreasonably loud, disturbing and unnecessary noise of such character, intensity or duration as to be detrimental to life or health of any individual or which is a disturbance of public peace and welfare is prohibited, as well as Ordinance 66-74, which is a playing of loud music with such volume to annoy or disturb the quiet comfort or repose of any resident or person is also a violation. We have tried to work with the owner, Vern, um, and it just hasn't, it hasn't, uh, worked out, um, as well as uh, Rosa Phillips, who's a former older person, uh, but to no avail. Um, when we have brought days at 11 o'clock, 
the bands are told to stop because after 11 o'clock, it's disrupting the residents. We are also told if I'm sitting at my fire pit and I have my radio playing too loudly, that it's disturbing my neighbors, the police will come and tell me, it's too loud, you're disturbing the neighborhood, turn it down. If my exhaust on my car is too loud, or I'm playing my radio even during the daytime, too loud, you know those cars that drive past your house with the windows rolled up and you can hear them in your house with your air conditioner running and you go, what was that noise? And it's the boom, 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 boom. Well, that is what we have been living with in our neighborhood for months. Um, it's disrupted our neighborhood and as of July 10th, there have been 10 police contacts with Sol Nova, which I believe also uh, constitutes a nuisance ordinance violation. Um, we want the city to provide us with a peaceful neighborhood. They're trying to revitalize the neighborhood. Come 11 o'clock, I wanna be able to put my head on my pillow and go to sleep as I'm sure many of you do. However, I can't do that many nights because of Sol Nova. Um, I realize our police department at, on the evenings are understaffed and uh, I understand that a noise violation is not real high on their priority list. Sometimes they don't even get to respond to it because they're busy responding to more important calls. And for that, I understand. However, this should not be allowed to continue. I don't understand why come 11 o'clock, they're allowed to keep going until two o'clock in the morning. And I have to try to have a loud fan going in my bedroom with a noise machine and I can still hear it, but I, may be able to fall asleep. And that to me is unacceptable. We have tried working with him. He gave us, uh, he told us he was gonna build a sound barrier. He was just waiting for city approval. That hasn't happened. He was told, he told me he was gonna go out, of, he's going out of business so you don't have to worry about it anymore. Well, that didn't happen. So what I guess we're asking the city to do is to step in and give our neighborhood, the peace and quiet that we, and all of you, wish you could have come 11 o'clock at night that you wanna to go to bed. Thank you. Um, I, there are also two other gentlemen here that would like to speak if they can. Thank you. Thank you. Would somebody else like to step up to the lectern? State your name and address. Scott Kittle, 1408 North 12th. I must have been a cancer patient and my colleagues keep saying, go home, get rest and quiet. 11 o'clock, from about 10, 30, 11 o'clock, it's boom, 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 boom. I have called yeah, four times about it. I know the police department can't do everything, but I feel my doctors tell me get have quiet, I should not have to listen to it. I know it bothers other neighbors, and I always turn two air conditioners on plus a fan, and you can still hear it. I thank you for the time. I appreciate anything you can do. Thank you. And before I forget, um, I also have to speak. We need to go to the mic, so we yeah. I also forgot, I have a petition signed by 20 people in our little neighborhood, 20 of them that signed the petition because he is, he's so loud that they can't can't take it anymore. So I don't know if I give this to you or. Thank you. And do we have anybody else that would like to 
address the committee? State your name and address, please. Hi, my name is Adam Seibert. I live at 1322 North 12th Street. Um, personally, I like bass, but not at, not at midnight. And it, it is extremely loud. It, my windows, if you have just the perfect glare, you can see them. Every single window in the house will, will rattle a little bit. Um, I got two little kids, three and seven, and at times it is difficult, especially when they're a little sick. A little, um, it's hard to get them to sleep, keep them sleeping. Um, both my daughters, their bedrooms are on the street side, so that's even on my side of the house, um, on the west side, it's you can still hear it. And uh, along with you guys, I'm also sleeping with a AC running. We also in my daughter's room we keep a TV on, but it's it's more or less the it's just cons consistent. It, you know, it's a beat. So that that rhythm, it's I don't know. It, sometimes when it has a breakdown or something, it'll it'll wake you up. But yeah, that, that's pretty much it. Thank you. Thank you. Do we have any more? And Mr. Miller, are you here? Oh, just Mr. Hughes. <coughs> oh, that was yeah. okay. Um, is yeah, it's the bar owner. We'll go to that one. Your name and address, please. It's on. It's on. Hello. Yep. Would you like me to repeat that? Yes, please. My name is Vern Kittler. I'm the owner of Solanova. I live at 2113 North 15th Street. And um, I don't really know what to say. I don't want to be a negative impact on the environment around us, and that was never our intention when we opened. We are a music venue. We play music. We have bands. We have DJs. Our current hours of operation are Friday and Saturday, 8 p.m. until 2 a.m. So we are open 12 hours a week. Uh, we've had a few contacts with police. I don't know if it's been 10, probably, but they come and they tell us that they got a complaint. They asked me to come out and talk to them and they just asked me to turn it down a little bit. They don't deem that it's overly offensive. I don't have any problems with the law enforcement. I turn it down when they come and tell me and that's usually what happens. But I wanna emphasize that I don't wanna be a negative impact on the environment, and I don't wanna be a negative impact on our neighborhood, and I would love to find a way to do it. I did get a quote from several people as far as to do possible sound barriers to my building, and they are all a minimum of $10,000. I have been waiting to have a meeting with the city to talk about a possible sound ordinance update or anything at all that works with the nature of our business. We are not a bar. We are not open throughout the week to serve alcohol to people. We are a music venue. We are only open on Friday and Saturdays for an event. So we're not, we're not like any other business in Sheboygan. And I'm gonna say it one more time because it's very important for me that everybody here knows that we do not want to be a negative impact on this environment in our neighborhood. So we will do whatever it takes to make it better, but it's gonna cost money and I don't know if I can pay for it immediately. Okay, thank you. Is there any additional comments? Chuck? Yeah, so uh, we first became aware of this issue in, in April, Alderperson Rose Phillips contacted our office um, indicating she'd received a complaint from a constituent, had also talked to Mr. Kittler. Uh, at that point, there was just one warning uh, for noise, and that was it. Um, the focus of the question at that time was the, the noise ordinance itself, questions about whether there's a better way to do uh, the ordinance. The, our, our noise ordinance that applies in these situations is uh, what we is what we call a reasonable person under the circumstances standard, meaning that it's you know basically an officer goes and determines uh, would a reasonable person under the circumstances believe that the the sound is, the, is unreasonable, um, and that type of ordinance generally is, frankly you know I know people don't always like it because it doesn't say well 
you can turn it up to six, but not to seven or whatever. Uh, but it is actually the most uh, objective way of measuring sound. Um, we do have a decibel ordinance in our zoning code uh, that we used for certain types of situations. It doesn't apply to this, well, it could apply to this situation if the zoning was different, but uh, it doesn't. Uh, and the city has been entirely unsuccessful in ever getting a prosecution on uh, a decibel-based noise ordinance because decibel-based noise ordinance, as much as people might think that they're more objective, are actually more subjective because there's 20 different scales that you can use and you can't really write an ordinance that includes all of the scales. Uh, additionally, it takes a, a sound expert. Uh, you have to deal with all sorts of different factors and even when you have uh, a decibel scale, the results of the decibel scale will change given humidity and given the wind. Um, and, uh, and frankly, the last time I was involved in one of those litigations, we hired uh, a noise expert. Uh, it had to do with the Gus Holman uh, uh, business up on uh, the north side of town. Uh, and uh, Gus Holman's lawyers made our noise expert look absolutely silly because you can't prosecute a, a decibel-based noise ordinance. So I did, you actually do, I provided you a copy. It's this, the second page of, uh, uh, of the recommendations today. I provided you with a copy of the email uh, that I sent to uh, Alderperson Phillips uh, on April 15th uh, about the issue. And so that, that may be helpful to you on that particular issue. Now, beyond, beyond that, there are a couple of other uh, things uh, that may be uh, important to note. note. Um, enforcement of the no noise ordinance obviously is undertaken by the police department. And I did look, um, and I do have a record. Uh, it's, it's interesting to note uh, there are 10 contacts with the police department uh, regarding Solanova. Only seven of them relate to noise. Um, the, the business has been open about a year, so that's 10 in a year. The previous business, it's interesting to note, had an average of 17.2 uh, contacts per year, so uh, we're actually going in the right direction. Uh, although if they're open less, you know, that, that's certainly open to uh, some level of interpretation. But there are, you know, in the last year, there are seven uh, noise uh, complaints. There have been, there, out of all those, there's only been one warning issued. Whether that means that the officers in that case felt that a, war a warning wasn't warranted or whether they just felt there was a better way to take care of it, you know, that's, uh, um, you know, that, that's the officers. I did notice the one, the one issue that came up in all seven report, or not all of them, but that generally came up is that the problem seems to be related to when the door opens and that the noise gets to be much louder when the door opens. And that probably is something that uh, uh, Mr. Kittler could think about as far as how uh, he might solve the problem. My suggestion, and, and obviously the PD is here as well, and they may have something to add to that. My suggestion is that the parties contact the neighborhood officer uh, and work with them. Uh, neighborhood police officers are trained and are really good at dealing with a lot of these kinds of things and, and can be very helpful. And uh, and my experience often very much are. Uh, and, you know, that's probably the best way to solve this because you don't enforce the noise ordinance. Um, you only write it and um, the noise ordinance we have is probably about the best that, that we have. And it's just a matter really of enforcement rather than trying to write new rules. So that would be, those, that would be my comments on it. Chuck, I have a question. Sure. Um, the ordinance could be rewritten so that there's some language on maybe a time barrier in there or something reasonable um, for the bar owner, and, but also for the homeowner seeing it, it's in a residential area. Um, I'm not sure how you would write one with a noise because, that's my question. because <laughs> the, the, the issue with time, so we do already have, the ordinance is written as a reasonable person under the conditions. And the conditions include time. So what is reasonable at, 10 p.m. is different than what is reasonable at 1 a.m. is different than might, might be reasonable at another time. Also taken into account is the location. What is reasonable on, in the Michigan Avenue Bar District might be different than what is reasonable, you know, at, in the Volrath North Point neighborhood, for, for example. Um, 
So, and, and you know, I prosecuted these things for 19 years. Um, it's, it's been six years since I have, but my experience was the officers do a pretty good job of applying that reasonable person standard. Um, you know, you, you do have to sort of consider a lot of things and typically in a reasonable person standard, you're gonna make somebody mad, maybe both sides mad. I think that's kind of what's happened a little bit here, unfortunately, but you're kind of in a losing uh, circumstance in, in, in that regard. And, and again, I think that's another reason why getting the neighborhood officer uh, involved because you now have a reasonable person um, uh, who is involved and, and can kind of hopefully uh, uh, deal with the, with the circumstance. Dean. Well, I guess it's, you know, with the, the question I have or the concern that I have, he's got a petition with 20 signatures, so that means it's not just one gentleman in the neighborhood. It sounds like there's you know, quite a few people in the neighborhood that are being disturbed. So I don't know. I mean, I guess this is maybe on your side. This is maybe a question for the chief is, you know, what can we do about enforcement a little bit more on that? I mean, if, if you know, if which, you know, what officers are responding or if the neighborhood officer can maybe do something a little bit more to, you know. Officer Salazar? Oh, you gotta hit him. Gotta you're, hit him. you're on. Nope, he's not. He's not, it's not red. Oh, there we go. Okay. Uh, Lieutenant Mike Stelter, Sheboygan. Uh, so just like, I'll reiterate what City Attorney Adams said is um, even though this was not on our radar initially, um, it is now and it's been assigned to a neighborhood officer uh, to meet with both Vern and the neighbor, the residents that are uh, complaining about the noise to do some problem solving and determine exactly what, how bad the noise is. <clears throat> um, we also, from our side, from the police side of things, are going to discuss um, having more of a... Uh, uh, being on the same page as far as enforcement, um, whether or not a written warning is necessary or a verbal warning or a citation in the future also. So I think a, a more of a consistent response from us because it's all, we're all aware of it now, the officers that work that area and the supervisors that supervise it, um, that'll help out as well. Thank you. Thank you. Jeff. Chief. Yep, you got so I, again, would just follow up with a couple things. Um, number one, I would uh, commend Mr. Miller for his efforts because um, he has called um, at least three times in, in July. Um, and then I saw at least two times um, in, in around November when they first opened up. And then maybe January or March, I'd really have to check my records. Um, and so not, not to knock anybody else, but really some of the things that have to happen is Mr. Miller can't be the only one calling and leaving his name. Uh, anonymous calls don't get us far. So we need, when, when residents are experiencing the discomfort, to call and tell who they are so that if the neighborhood officer gets involved, they can follow up. Um, and so I agree with Chuck that that's really the, the next step. I would agree also to some degree that the police department in July dropped the ball. Um, but, but this is why we have neighborhood officers because when you look at the calls, somebody different got sent to each one. And so if there's not the amount of communication that there needs to be um, and the officers are busy, then they're not going back and checking the history and seeing that there were three calls in the last 10 days and that they need to, to do more than tell them to turn it down, that they either ne need to issue a formal warning or they need to write them a citation. So Lieutenant Stelter's here because he's in charge of the second shift, so he's representing the, essentially the people that work until 11 at night and then the next shift comes on and he's been talking to them so that they're consistently dealing with this and citations I believe are in order. Um, we can't go every night to his establishment and tell him you need to turn it down. He needs to monitor what, what the sound level is outside as well as inside. Um, so it's one thing for him to stand up here and say he cares about the neighborhood, but he's been warned enough times that he should be, should be um, more cognizant of, of what the noise level is. That's at least my opinion. So I would hate to see him go out of business and that's not what we're trying to do, but he clearly needs to work with the neighborhood um, until the issue can be resolved. Okay, any other questions, comments? Pardon? 
Yes, please. Um, I would love to maybe, because we don't do these events every day. This isn't a Monday through Sunday through Thursday thing. This is literally reserved for Fridays and Saturdays. I was hoping at some point to be able to hope to get a permit to operate, even if it's not till the later hours, even if there's an hourly time that we can agree on. And the reason that I asked for this is because we are not a normal bar and we're not like any other business that's in Sheboygan. Um, we haven't had any fights. We don't have any over drinking. We do get calls about the loud noise. And that is a very negative thing on the community, but we've also done a lot to make our property look nicer. We do a lot to keep any negative activity and behavior under control at our establishment. There's never any problems. So if there's something that can be figured out where I can operate safely, that's what I'm looking for. Like they can call the police, the neighborhood can be upset. That doesn't make me happy. I'm not trying to go against these people. I want to coexist with them and I want to find an operating level that's safe for everyone so that not only can they have their peace and quiet and do their lives, I can run my business and know that I'm running it within the legal limits and I don't have to worry about police showing up at my establishment and ruining my business. Not that you're ruining it, but you know what I mean? Like officers show up, it's not good. But the most important for me, thing for me is to find an operating level that I can actually know not that what I do one week safely, the next week is different because this rule is so subjective. He mentioned that when our front door opens that that's when the problem arises. That's what we had the quote for. We had a quote set up for a second vestibule with a second door on it so that that contains the, the sound when our front door is open. But as I said, it is a very big expense and we just haven't ex done it yet because we haven't even had a chance to talk with the city about what to do with the noise and the neighborhood since the complaints have come in. So that was something else I wanted to say. Thanks. Any other comments, questions? All right. And because that's um, under advisement only, we don't have to vote on anything. Okay. I'll make a motion to file. Second. Okay. Any questions, comments? Okay, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Chair votes aye. Motion carried. Thank you, everyone, for your testimony. Yeah. All right. Back up to <coughs> resolution number 36 21 22 7 19 21. A resolution authorizing application for the Edward Bryan Memorial Justice Assistant Grant, JAG, program fiscal year 2021 local solic solicitation and entering into a memorandum of understanding with Sheboygan County. Chief. Good evening. Um, so this is a, a yearly grant that the police department gets. Um, it's a federal grant from the federal government. Um, there's no pass through. There is a what's essentially a disparate requirement, which means that um, because of the crime levels um, in the city versus in the county, we have to share the money with them. So we've had uh, an agreement with them probably 20 years long, at least I would, I would guess, but it's a yearly thing that um, essentially we split the money and as part of the agreement, they actually do all of the grant work for us, so they save um, that work for us. So this year the grant is for, um, I don't have it in front of me here, 18,256, the share for the city would be $9,194. Um, what we're asking for is that you approve it and um, provide permission to sign the MOU with the county. Um, this year, what we're using the money for is to update our crowd control equipment. So it's purchasing some helmets and some shields, um, the helmets that we have, whatever I put in the IFC, they're, they're more than 40 years old, so they're very old. So um, we need to update those. Hopefully we won't have to use them, but if you look at any of the after action reports, um, including some of the stuff that's been written about the incident at the Capitol, um, 
one of the biggest knocks against agencies is the failure to prepare. So it, it's clearly at that time that we need to update some of that equipment and um, we don't have the money within the normal budget to do that. And so this is an opportunity to take care of that. Okay, do we have any questions? Okay, motion. I need a motion. I'll make a motion to accept this report or to uh, Make a second approve the arrow. Second. Okay. Any comments, questions? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed nay. Chair votes aye. Motion carried. And resolution number 44 2122, 17 19 21 by Chief of Police Christopher Dabakowski submitting the police department's quarterly report of benchmark measurements for the period commencing April 1, 21 and ending June 30th, 21. Okay, good evening again. Uh, the report's in front of you. Um, the highlights I put in the IFC um, for part one crime, there was an increase in violent crime year to date in comparison to the same period in last year, um, 72 part one crimes versus 65. Um, I would also note though that's a decrease from 95 in 2019. Um, so because of COVID, a lot of people were um, less active last year during this time. Um, so to be able to keep the numbers close to that um, is very important. And then the same thing that I would point out, pointed out in the, in the first quarter is really the increase in those violent crime numbers um, come from the report of rapes and Many of those um, are from what we would call delayed reporting and attributed to, to one suspect um, that um, a victim or two came forward from past years and then our investigation of that led to, to other victims. Um, then looking at property crime, there was a decrease again in property crime from 2020 versus 2019 or 2021 versus both the last two years. So 284 this year um, versus 385 last year and 378 um, the year before. Um, some of the numbers I, I would just um, point out a little bit for you. So burglaries were, were at, at the end of the second quarter, 32 for the year. If that continues, um, we would be at about 60 or 70 for the end of the year. That's about um, in comparison to 400 in 2007, eight and nine around there. So that's the kind of decrease that we've seen over the last 12 years. Thefts are currently at 236, um, which would put us, you know, around under 600. Last year they were at 689 at the end of the year, and in 2019 they were at 678. Um, 2000, the same thing, 7, 8, and 9, we were at about 2,600 to 2,400 thefts. So those property crimes have come down that, that far, and that's a result of um, several different things, but a lot of it is people making uh, better steps to pre prevent them from happening. So take care of their things, putting them away and locking them up. Um, next item, um, there was a slight increase in traffic accidents year to date, 663 versus 611 um, in comparison to 2020, but it's down from 805 at this time in 2019. So as I reported after the, the first quarter, we have a concentrated efforts that we're continuing around traffic safety enforcement. And part of that is the messaging that we're doing um, through our social media and then following through um, with our enforcement efforts um, to try to both educate the community and then follow up with enforcement to keep those numbers down. So we're still tracking very well for traffic accidents. Um, especially well when you consider how um, aggressive and how much distracted driving continues to go on. So, um, yeah, I wouldn't point out much to you other than um, this year we've con continued with our, with our hiring to fill our vacancies. Um, so next week we'll be swearing in three more people um, to bring us up to full staffing. So that will be very helpful. Um, we have a, a 
bunch of people that are still in training that that will be completed soon. So um, the actual calls for service haven't slowed down, but a um, lot more um, related to social issues, mental health, drug and alcohol abuse, and those kinds of things are really keeping us running. And then, um, especially during the summer, we've tried to um, focus more on getting back to some of our outreach um, efforts to be able to connect with the community, both to build relationships, but also to, to get feedback on issues that are happening in neighborhoods like you heard earlier. So trying to make those connections so that we can find, find those problem situations and really um, solve them is really what we're trying to focus on. Do we have any questions for the chief? Okay, hearing none, we need approval of this report. Uh, I make a motion to approve the report. Second. Any comments? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed nay. Chair votes aye. Approved. Okay. Pardon? Oops. Nope. Yeah, we did. Yeah. Yeah, we did. Yeah, yeah we did. Yeah, I motioned yeah, we it. Did. Yeah. We made the motion. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay, Chuck. <laughs> You're still way behind me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm okay. <laughs> our, our own number 43-21-22-7-19-21 by Fire Chief Eric Montoleno. I'm sorry, Eric slaughtered it. Uh, <laughs> submitting the fire department's quarterly report of benchmark measurements for the period commencing April 1, 2021 and ending June 30th, 21. Well, thank you and good evening. So um, as Chief Domogowski had stated, uh, due to the 2020 COVID issues, our numbers are relatively high this from this time uh, compared to last year. So just a couple highlights real quick. The, our total call volumes up 14%, um, and uh, our emergency responses are up 27%, which is a big jump, but again, due to COVID. So people are back into their regular routine, which is uh, good to see. We continue to do our fire inspections. However, uh, both training and our inspection numbers are down but it correlates to the COVID issue. So it's kind of odd that you know our calls are going up, but the training and the inspections are down. But uh, we are on track as normal compared to several years, you know, so we're, we are on track of that. Um, we continue to install smoke detectors within, uh, when we see them uh, non-compliant in the businesses and homes. Uh, so we also installed uh, 16, which is good news, but at the same time, uh, we want to continue to keep that number low. That means all the homes or businesses are, are maintaining protect, protection. Uh, so uh, our, we've also had an increase in uh, fires. So our fire investigations are up. Uh, we did uh, 10 more compared to uh, last year at this time. So uh, those are just a few of the highlights. Um, and the good news uh, not associated with this is we are doing our Citizens Fire Academy, which I am very excited about this fall. We've got 12 uh, participants. It's our inaugural, so we kind of wanted to keep the numbers a, a little manageable. And then we'll see how it goes and maybe increase it next year. So if you have any questions. Okay, hearing none, I need a motion. So moved. Second. Okay, um, any comments, questions? Okay, chair votes, oh, hello. Um, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed nay, chair votes aye. Motion carries, thank you, Chief. Thank you. Um, Semi-annual performance report for the Department of City Development, Building and Inspection Department. Take it away, Chad. Thank you, Chair. So we, uh, Chuck and I, um, we, Todd has allowed us, we used to do quarterly benchmarks. We've gone to semi-annual, so twice a year we'll be coming before you uh, to present the benchmarks. 
um, under the planning and development building inspection reports to this committee and the planning and development side reports to the finance committee. So what you're looking at on the spreadsheet on the board docs is the attachment related to the revenues collected in building inspection and I'm not gonna go through every one. You can see the comparison uh, first quarter, second quarter from 2021 through uh, in comparison to 2020. Um, but I will just say that our year-to-date reven year revenues for 2021 are a little bit higher than we were last where we where we were last year. Even though it was a pandemic, we had a fairly good year that we ended with a lot of good construction projects. Um, and then the building permit revenue for 2021, if you take and that would be really just taking out the park impact fee. So the city uh, building inspection collects the park impact fee as part of the building uh, permit process. Um, so our, when we look at the total building permits, our revenues are a little bit lower than where we were last year, but all indications are the rest of the year should be good. When we look at the number of inspections performed, so we've got substantially a higher number of inspections this year than we did last year, and that's primarily because we have now morphed code enforcement over to the MUNIS program versus running out of the AS400. So we have an easier way to track our number of inspections and we can do mobile tracking. So as the code enforcement or officers are out there and stopping at every property, that's all getting documented uh, in the MUNIS system. <clears throat> and then from the uh, housing side of things, we continue to target certain neighborhoods, developing baselines as part of our neighborhood revitalization strategy and uh, working with the police department and going out and looking from property to property. So we've got four neighborhoods left in the a five-year strategic planning area that we uh, had identified. There's a total of about 14 neighborhoods, so we will have uh, baseline information for every parcel, and then the goal is to go back in five years to each one of those neighborhoods and see how they've hopefully improved. And if they've gone the other way, then we've got other issues. So um, you can see the inspection citations, those kind of that kind of data. So if there's any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. So have there been, uh, how has the, the, the complaints for the compliance officers, has that been pretty steady? Has that gone up, down? Uh, well, I, you know, I think we've been at this now for 10 years. So, mm -hmm. you know, it's definitely the low hanging fruit is taken care of. Now it's really this, the challenging ones that are take a little bit more resources and a little bit more education. Yes, there's the ongoing nuisance and neighborhood and garbage issues that we have to deal with, but you know the big building code issues, a lot of those have been you know, rectified. We've brought some other partners on with us through the Lakeshore Apartment Association that are helping deal with some of those issues with rental units. So I think it's overall getting better, mm -hmm. um, but the ones that we have left are, are you know, challenging ones. Okay. And they take a lot of resources and a lot of education. Chad, I get a, quite a few calls for this time of year, the grass, how tall it is. And um, I know the ordinance, the city ordinance is 12 inches. I've been told that from DPW. Um, we may need to work on that because that, you know, that, that's a high amount. Um, but, and I imagine if it's a nicer neighborhood that is a little aggravating. Um, do you hear anything on that? I mean, are, do you well under the ordinance the weed commissioner or the tall grass commissioner is the Department of Public Works. So our guys are referring those complaints as they see them in the field over okay. to the Public Works Department. So I think that's a better question for them. Um, but you know, I think yes, there's continue. You know, there always will be weed and and grass issues with people moving out and properties going vacant. It's definitely not where we were a couple of years ago when we were coming out of the recession and every other property on, you know, was foreclosed and vacant. So, you know, it, it's, there's, they're out there and, you know, it's a constant follow up and working through that. But yeah, we're identifying them, the neighborhood officers are identify them and we're, you know, collectively working with DPW to rectify it. Okay, thank you. Any other questions for him? No? Okay. okay, thank you. Thank you. That's uh, discussion only. Mm -hmm. All right. We're going to go to um, the city attorney's office. 
Yep, so I provided the semi-annual performance report there for you and I can answer any questions that you have. None? Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Chuck. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. okay. Resolution number 47, 2122, 7 submitting a communication oh, from, oh. oh, wait a minute. We're going to go down with Michael Miller. Okay, we're going to go down to... Resolution number 452122, submitting various change of premise applications. We're we recommending check? granting both applications on the RO. I'll make a motion to uh, for staff by, by staff recommendations. Second. Okay. Any questions? Concern? Okay, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed nay. Chair votes aye. Motion carried. Resolution number 4621-22-719-21, submitting a license application for a change of agent. And staff is also recommending granting that application. <laughs> well, I was I waiting. Was, I figured you'd do it. I, oh, fine. I'll, I'll, fine. I'll do it then. <laughs> Don't fight me. Okay. <laughs> I make a motion we grant the RO. Second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed nay. Motion carried. Chair votes aye. Um, next meeting date will be August 11th, 2021. We've exhausted the agenda. And I need a motion to adjourn. Motion I'll make the motion. Adjourn. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed nay. Chair votes aye. We're adjourned. <laughs> I'm sorry about that. So it's okay if I miss one or two? <laughs> <laughs>